open up the door. It's Dave. Who? Dave. D A V E. Dave. Right, man. Dave. Dave's not here. <laughs> As I think about the things to add to this video series, one of the things I was thinking about was this sort of fun outdoor sort of gaming thing. It's, it's like this broad scale game idea that came up. And there's this really cool thing that the Miami Herald came up with some years ago. And they actually came up with it um, back when they still had the Tropic Magazine that was the uh, Sunday insert in the, in the uh, paper. And it was like back in 1984, so almost 40 years ago now. And it was conceived by Dave Barry, the humorist along with uh, two of his colleagues, um, Tom Schroeder and uh, Gene Weingart, I believe are their names. So it was Tom, Gene, and Dave who came up with these really fun sort of activity you could do. And they called it the Tropic Hunt. Later it became the Herald Hunt. But the idea was, conceptually, they would give you a series of clues and some things you had to do. And it was part scavenger hunt, part puzzle thing you were doing. So you'd go out and you'd go to this location in Miami, a physical location, and they would read off a couple of key things to you um, that would kind of help you get you started but you would use the Sunday insert inside the Tropic magazine that would give you a map and some coordinates and some locations and th some things you had to find and what you would do is go off and find the five puzzles you had to solve. Each of the puzzle answers was a number and then that number could be used to locate a sort of puzzle solution and they seemed to you know sort of um, not connected in any way. You, you read through the five solutions and you went huh? But then they'd bring you back at the end of the day to the main stage and they'd give you one more clue and that would tie all of those things together. So you would have all those five things plus this additional clue to lead you to one final puzzle and you had to find the puzzle and solve it. And often it was some kind of ridiculous solution where you had to like go up to somebody and say something specific or call a phone number or text someone or do something like that. And it was really, really fun. So. I did it a few times in the 80s, like when I was in high school and college, and I had some fun with it. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I um, couldn't do it for a few years because I wasn't living in South Florida, but you know, tried to follow up and you know, stay around it and try to solve the puzzles sort of conceptually in my head because it was just so much fun. And then um, when I moved back to South Florida, I started doing it more regularly. And I did it a lot of years in a row, and um, there was a few years where the puzzle wasn't happening, where the hunt wasn't happening, where they didn't do it for some reason. They also added the Washington Post hunt uh, up in uh, DC um, that would go on for a couple of years in there somewhere. And for the last few years that they did it in South Florida, down, down here in Miami, I joined it with my kids and my dad, and it was a lot of fun. And we had a couple of other friends and relatives we'd do it with, and it was just so much fun to go out there and do these puzzles and try to solve these things. And I, you know, I look at it fondly. And the last one they had was in 2019, right before the pandemic. So it, it was the uh, kind of the end point of it. And I don't think they're gonna bring it back. I mean, who knows, Dave Barry may come back with another one this year, next year, who knows. But it seems unlikely. It seems like it's run its course. It, you know, it's been almost 40 years now and you know, that's probably it. But it was so much fun. So what I wanted to do was I had created a video of the last one and I thought I'd add it here as sort of this contextual thing where you can kind of see how these puzzles worked and how it went together. It was really, really intriguing. And I hope you kind of get the sense of sort of the logic and some of the thought process that went into this. Dave was sort of ingenious in the way he thought of this and the way he put it together. And I just wanted to share it with you because it's really kind of neat, fun, and interesting. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. So it was time once again for the annual Herald Hunt. This is the 35th year they've done it. It's an amazing event put on by the Miami Herald. The first thing is you get this little uh, booklet that comes inside your Sunday paper. And it gives you some opening questions, some information about how the hunt works. There's some advertisements in here. And they tell you about kind of what to expect. And what you're gonna see is that there's gonna be five puzzles you need to solve. And every answer needs to be uh, a number. And then you have a map in there and uh, the map directs you to where you should find these puzzles. And then each of these is a potential answer among those five. Once you've solved the five, you'll have some clues in there. They'll give you a sixth question, and then you'll uh, be able to solve the final puzzle. And there's another couple of pages of ads in here. And then now uh, we move on to actually doing the hunt. And here's Dave Barry to get us started. So is everybody ready for the opening oh. map They are. 
So the numbers and letters that he mentioned correspond to the map coordinates. So you've got the numbers down the side, the letters across the bottom, and it's directing you to a location that you should look at. And those become important as you're working through the puzzle because they tell you where to go and where the puzzles might happen. In this case, the puzzles were all nearby, so they weren't hard to find, but generally speaking, you need to find them. Like Tetris pieces, you know, that sort of thing, where there's, there's oh, a square, there's a, yeah, an open like bracket. On, like on, 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 on. The pay station. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There must be some other clue around here that helps you out. Must be some other pieces of the puzzle that we're going to see here in a minute. Now, interestingly, this was the hardest puzzle for us to solve. We spent more than an hour of the three hours of allotted time trying to figure out what in the heck this actual thing was. It seemed very cryptic and like there should be some sort of a clue somewhere. So we spent a lot of time walking around looking for clues, trying to figure out what that was, what these symbols meant. And uh, it didn't occur to us until much later that on the map there was something similar. And all you had to do was put these two symbols together and you could come up with an equation that then you could solve. So it's five times 74 times nine will give you the number you're looking for. I don't know why it took us so long to figure out, but for some reason it did, but we did figure it out eventually. And as you uh, put it in the calculator, five times 74 times uh, nine is 3,330. So that's the answer you were looking for. Have you heard the word is out? I don't know what that means yet, but we'll figure it out as the hunt goes on. Now, I don't know why, but when I looked at the actual clue they gave us, the plus signs to me seemed like if they were replaced with zeros, we could easily get a phone number. And it turns out that the plus on the phone on a contemporary piece of equipment is a zero. So if you dial that number, 305-376-2044, you get a recording that says that you're staring, standing in front of GHI. Now, what does that mean? Hmm. I think that's where you need to start thinking about this is a phone dial. And if you look, there were 10 circles on the ground and a little thing, and that would look like a rotary phone dial. So GHI is number four. And what was over at number four? Well, if we look back at our actual uh, description of what it looked like, I actually drew a little quick map here to kind of help myself a little bit. I drew the 10 circles and the little uh, piece at the bottom, and that's when I realized it was a rotary dial. And Brad, the person's name was, was standing on number four. So it occurred to me that if we took the letters for Brad and typed them into the phone, we could actually get the number we're looking for. So just by looking at the rotary dial here, we see that uh, the B is 2, R is 7, A is 2, and D is 3. So we could just take the number 2723, and the answer is the pass is thrown. Again, don't know what that means, what the context is here, but we'll figure it out as we go through the hunt. play well together. I'm in. 
So each one of these frisbees had a word on it, and uh, there were many frisbees out on the field. All you had to do was walk around and look for the nine different words that were there, and then assemble them into a sentence. So when we collected all the nine words, what we found was that the words were write the three of frisbees with an S, A, imagine, two, one. And as we worked through it and teased it out, what we figured out was if we put it together in a sentence that says, imagine three frisbees to the right of a one, we realize that that has to be one, zero, 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 which would be 1,000. So the clue is find the man with an, the apparel we've described. Hand him a slip of paper with your name, cell number, and password. Okay, so that's going to come into play when we get to the end game. So this was a fun little middle school marching band that was out there helping out. And yeah, the song is Smoke on the Water, and I don't want to run afoul of any copyright laws on this video, so I'm just going to play that couple of seconds that are there. So the song goes on, and what you start to realize as you're looking at them is that they're standing in an X formation. They form an X. So uh, it's kind of obvious that they're in that formation because this would be a non-traditional formation for a band to stand in while they're standing there. So it's uh, smoke on the water. What could that mean? We went back through the uh, hunt guide and we found out that there was some books of, uh, that they were selling and one of them showed a picture of smoke on the water, the deep water horizon disaster. If you go to the URL that's listed there, so take out your phone and hop on the, up to the URL, you find that there's a picture, uh, a Google Maps picture with two numbers on it, a seven and a 13. And if you look down, that's exactly the spot where they were standing, the band was standing. So the X would go right between the seven and the 13. So it's seven times 13 to get to the number you're looking for. So in this case, we get to 91 and it says, read it like this and the this is upside down. So that must be something we have to do later in the hunt. Our final two, the battle of all battles. The Knights versus the Pirates. Hey, the music, please. Guys, this is the most exciting battle to stay in the line. Who will be our winner? Stop! Oh, and our winner today, if you could please step up, is our Pirates. Everybody give it up for our Pirates. Do you have anything to say? In the hunt guide, there was this rental kingdom, and look at that, there's a pizza pie for $2.95. So if we use the $2.95, we can see the first part is HRLD. Hmm, that was the name of the URL we used before when we looked up the Deepwater Horizon book. So probably we're going to have to look up a URL, though I really don't know what or why, but we'll find that out in a little bit. So the clue Tom gave us was that you need the holiest number. That would be the most eights in a number. And there was an 8888 in the uh, answers. So that would make sense as the final answer. Now, someone solved this puzzle within five minutes before we even really got started and figured it out. So unfortunately, we weren't able to finish the puzzle, but I'll take you through it anyway. The clue is telling you to go look for the sub, and that's the one on the hunt map that was down where the barge was, where you had half of the equation that we 
took, tr took time solving. And if you walk back down that way, you'll see that the barge is still out there, but now it's got the number 48 on it. 48 doesn't necessarily make sense. It doesn't give you anything until you consider the other clues that we've already got. This is where you put together some of the pieces you already had. If we go back and look at the other clues, the number 91 was, read it like this, as in upside down. So that would be 8H. So if we go back and look at the map, Position 8H would take us over to this sculpture. There was someone out there handing out something, and it was the remainder of a URL. So if you went to that URL, it was hrld.us slash whatever it was, and uh, you would go out and look for, uh, you would get a picture. And the picture was of the Eve Miami Hotel. And what they had done is something like this, where they wrote the words, the letters NAV at the beginning and ST at the end. So what they wrote out was Navy Vest. Hmm. So Navy vest, what could that mean? We're looking for somebody in a Navy vest, perhaps? And that's what it turned out to be. So as we went and uh, looked at the other clues that were there, uh, it says, find the man in the apparel we've described. Hand him a slip of paper with your name, cell number, and password, but password is hyphenated. So if we look at the other clues we have, uh, the pass is thrown. Pass, thrown. So if we take password as thrown out, so we put our name, our phone number and the words thrown out on a piece of paper and handed to the man in the Navy vest who happened to be over by the boat here, we would win the prize. Now, unfortunately, we didn't win, but that's okay. It was really pretty awesome. As we, uh, as we walked up, we saw the guy there. We saw the people who won. Congratulations to them. It was a really fun event, a nice hunt. It was a really good time. Uh, I think it was uh, really worthwhile. I will definitely do it again if they have it again next year or in a future year. Dave and Tom and the Miami Herald, thank you very much for another entertaining day. It's frustrating, it's vexing, but it's so weirdly wonderful and such a great time. What's your point, David?